Hey y'all, welcome back to the Late Night Vision Show. My name is Jason. I'm the owner of Outdoor Legacy Gear. I am one of your co-hosts. I've got my good buddy and co-host Hans from the Hans ETX YouTube channel. Hey Hans, are you with me tonight? Hey Jason, I am and it's good to be back for episode four. And I'm going to tell you, uh, I know like we've said for the last uh, three shows, man, the uh, outpouring of support and just the great messages that we're receiving from people has been phenomenal. I had a, a message today on Instagram uh, of a guy on our last uh, episode with the uh, state of the industry and talked about how how much he enjoyed hearing that information and, uh, you know, just the, kind of the inside baseball of the uh, the night vision world. So that was great. And we love to uh, keep those comments coming. You know, we, we love to hear them and uh, we appreciate everybody listening. Yeah, absolutely. I tell you, I agree. This response has been great. And, uh, you know, keep the comments, questions. Uh, we need all we can get. And we're looking forward to uh, trying to improve the show and talk about more things uh, that are interesting to all the listeners. But I'm going to tell you, there's something that uh, I'm pretty excited about right now. And that is I am going to the big giant metropolis of Ben Wheeler, Texas later this week. And I'm going to go hunting with Mr. Bacon Pancakes, as my kids call him, Hans ETX himself. Yeah, so we've got a VIP coming to uh, Ben Wheeler now. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Uh, we're going to roll out the red carpet. You know, uh, Ben Wheeler's population of about, well, there's way more hogs in Ben Wheeler than there are people, uh, about 800 people in Ben Wheeler. But we're excited about having you out. I've been uh, uh, getting ready for you on the tractor, mowing some trails for you, because I know how much you hate them snakes. So I'm trying to get everything cut down for you. Now, and, I'm telling you something. This is a this is a, a one thing I want a guaranteed hunt, guaranteed no snakes. And I don't snake. care. We don't even have to see a hog as long as you can guarantee no snakes. I'm good. Uh, well, I you know I can't I, I can only, I'd rather guarantee you that we would see hogs mm, rather than that we're not mm, going to see snakes. So uh, <laughs> and that you know how how bad that is. But no, we're excited uh, about having you out. You know, we're going to do some uh, some things together. We're going to you know test out some different scopes, and we're going to be uh, doing a lot of hog hunting. But uh, speaking of testing out scopes, Jason. I know we have a, a couple updates from our State of the Industry episode uh, uh, last week. So why don't you go ahead and give us a couple updates on some of the scopes that we talked about? Sure, absolutely. You know, it's always a risk when you do a, a show and you give the news because news changes uh, five minutes after you give it. And, and, you know, sure enough, that's what had happened. I got a little bit of info uh, last Friday on a couple of things. I'm just going to kind of go down the list. The uh, Sightmark Photon RTs, we talked about those and that production had been halted on those just because of a, a supply problem on an internal component. Again, I want to reiterate, uh, there was no known problems with the scopes, anything like that. It was just, again, a supply problem. Mm -hmm. And Friday, I found out that it, there was another shipment headed to the U.S. of the photons. So they uh, have started back production. I was told that it is, uh, you know, just a small shipment and the production seems to be low right now, but hopefully that's going to pick up steam in mm -hmm. the near future. So uh, they're back rolling. Uh, so that's good news. Also, we talked about the uh, PTS 536 uh, from FLIR. No news on that. Uh, nothing's changed that we know of. The LRF trails, that's the laser rangefinder models. I was told those are looking like it may be uh, August before we see those. Again, everybody's just speculating on these dates, but Pulsar pushed it back a little bit further than what they had told me before. And the good news is, and it's kind of a surprise to me, was that I, uh, Friday, uh, you know, checked UPS when they uh, delivered my packages, and I had a, a Trail XP50 LRF uh, in there to demo from Pulsar. They shipped this thing out. And so I'm really excited. I've got it zeroed in and I'm uh, going to be bringing that up there to on our hunt this week. And I can't wait to test that out. And hopefully, you know, we can both use it and eventually give a full review on the, the show about it. Yeah, that LRF, that's going to be fun. To, I can't wait to, to check it out. And, uh, you know, where we live, you know, it's similar to where you hunt. I know the yardages mm -hmm. of different things. So yes. we'll be able to tell pretty accurately, if, you know, how dead on that thing is uh, as yeah, far as accuracy. Absolutely. But, yeah, I think uh, it's going to be good. And, you know, there, there's a couple more quick things. The accolades, that's the mm -hmm. Pulsar thermal binoculars. 
Uh, looks like those could be coming sooner than later. Again, no firm ETA, but I was told to expect them pretty soon. One thing I didn't even think to mention last week was the uh, Pulsar Helion XQ28. These just came into stock, and uh, I've already gotten a couple of them. I've been using them. Uh, I've already sold one. They are excellent. Let me tell you what they are for those that don't know. The Helions are the handheld monoculars that Pulsar has that are very, very similar to their trails. They have all the same button configurations. They have the internal video recording. They have the removable rechargeable battery pack, and they have the Wi-Fi streaming to the app. Mm -hmm. So just, just like the trails, the XQ30 was the entry-level model, and it had a little bit of a different... Uh, lens and focus ring on it than all the other Helions. I'm not really sure why, but it did. And so Pulsar discontinued that model. They came out with the XQ28. It looks 100% identical to all the other Helions. And the nice thing about it is it's only $21.99. And I'm going to tell you, I'm very, very impressed with the image quality. It's a 2.3 optical magnification and I just, I've been using it next to a Helion XP28, which is a 640 core. This is just a 384 mm -hmm. core. And I'm telling you, it, it holds its own. So I'm going to bring that up. We can test that out this weekend too. Well, don't be surprised if you get home and that thing's not with you. <laughs> and it yeah, somehow I, slipped I'm in gonna, my back. <laughs> I'm going to have to tag all these thermals yeah. and uh, do, a, do a count of, you know, when I check them in and yeah. then when I leave Ben Wheeler, how many are still with me? Yeah, you told me you're bringing like a whole truckload of stuff to play with and toys. So you better keep an inventory because yeah. I see something I like, man. I might have to just kind of, <laughs> that one might have to fall out on the ground. And I know how that works. I know <laughs> how that works with you especially. Uh, absolutely. Hey, as long as you do a review on it, we'll be there. You go. That's there what you everybody go. wants. They want to see your reviews. Well, I am very ep uh, excited about this episode, Jason. This is, uh, and I'll go ahead and let you tell everybody what we're going to talk about. But man, this is something I could talk about forever. <laughs> I know this is this is going to be a great episode because this is going to be um, really an area, uh, all joking aside, of Hans' expertise. And what it is, we're going to talk about baiting hogs. Mm -hmm. And you know, everybody has got a theory on it. Everybody's got a. a favorite method and if you're you know maybe it's uh, you, you hunt an area that that you you know haven't ever baited hogs before or you know maybe you're new to hog hunting and so you don't know much about it well this is going to be a great episode because hans is the expert in baiting hogs i mean this guy i mean if you've watched his youtube channel you know he kills a ton of hogs and if you'll watch the vast majority of those hogs have got their head down in a hole eating corn yep. and uh, the, the good news here is that Hans has a super duper top secret family <laughs> recipe that was brought over on the Mayflower passed <laughs> all to... the way down. <laughs> and uh, he's got a recipe for sour in this corn and uh, he's going to give it to us here on the podcast tonight. So, you know, let's just go ahead and, and jump into it and let's just talk before we jump into your super secret family recipe. But I, I want to know, I mean, what is your theory on, on baiting hogs? Why do you do it? And do you think it's something that works well? Does it work all the time? So just kind of jump into that. Yeah. So, and that's a great place to start and a great question, Jason. You know, really when it comes to, to baiting hogs, um, especially out here where we're hunting in East Texas, it, you know, we're, there's a lot of thick uh, trees, a lot of thick cover. So really what we want to do uh, in the strategy behind it is to pull those hogs out into the open. Mainly that's the main thing that we need to do is pull hogs out into an open field, an open area where we can at least get a, a few shots on them and, you know, get them out there as far as possible before they head back on the woods. Uh, and really when, when they're coming out there and they're feeding, uh, we want to take advantage anytime that we can uh, where they've got their heads buried in that, that uh, bait pile or, uh, you know, if they're, you know, kind of, you know, it kind of looks like a shark feeding, feeding frenzy, you know, where they're <laughs> all going after a piece of meat, but they're fight, you know, hogs fight over the food and they're in there kind of, pushing each other around for it. And so that means they're distracted. And really, so it's about pulling hogs out of the woods. It's about distracting them away from your movement and your scent and giving you the best, uh, it, you're really setting up a shot. So you're looking at uh, high traffic areas when it comes to uh, game trails through woods and coming out of woods. 
uh, you, you know, you're looking at uh, tall grass where it's bent over, where you can tell they've run through, and you want to put your bait piles close to there. Um, but you want to set up a shot where it's close to a trail and you have a good shooting lane. You know, if you're kind of shooting in an area where there may be houses around, you can create your own shooting lanes. You can set up your own shooting scenario with a bait pile. So really that's, uh, th that's the main reason why I do it, that and uh, giving your ch yourself a chance for the uh, most success that you can have and bringing them in on corn to me in my experience has been more successful than just, randomly walking down trails or walking out in the woods or driving by fields. Uh, sure. So that's where I've had the most success. Yeah, I think that's logical. I mean, it's just like, you know, deer hunting or anything else. If you sit there long mm -hmm. enough, they're probably going to walk by, but why not try to attract them and, and get them into you? And, you know, that's the same thing I do. And what I found is, is that um, I'll probably have the same number of hogs, uh, whether I bait them or not, mm -hmm. but, if I can keep them baited, especially to one or two areas, it just increases my chances of getting them to come out on a time frame that I want where I can shoot them versus they may still come out in the pasture and they may root it up and destroy it, but it may be between 3 a.m. and 5 a.m. when I'm not out there and they could be anywhere in that whole pasture, right. but at least, and then they're still going to do that, but at least with that corn, you know, like you said, it kind of gives you the, the upper hand and let's hopefully tease them out there, uh, get them out there maybe a little more frequently and get them in the area that, that you want. So, yeah. well, well, going on into that, though, let's talk right. about, I mean, let's talk about this. You know, there, you know, obviously we know you can just throw out plain corn. That works. But you've got a, a recipe that you really have, all joking aside, you've used it a long time, very mm -hmm. successfully. And so just tell the guys, you know, what it is and what the recipe is and, you know, in case they want to go do it themselves. Right. And uh, so when I first started the Hans ETX YouTube, well, one of the very first videos that I did was uh, this hog baiting recipe. And, I, and it was something that was uh, told to me by uh, a relative of ours out here in East Texas. He's a, he's a guy that's, he's a farmer. He's, you know, uh, as country as country gets, <laughs> you, we all know these guys and he's man. He said, Hey Hans, come here. He said, I got a, I got, I know you're hunting hogs. I got a good recipe for you. So I thought, Oh gosh, here it comes. <laughs> you know, he's about, <laughs> he's about to feed me a, a load of, you know what, but, uh, he gave me this recipe and I tried it and I, and I, and I had a lot of success with it. And this video for me has been one of my best videos that I put on YouTube. Um, and I had a, a comment today on, on Instagram uh, of a guy that tried it and he calls it slaughter sauce because he's had wow. some success with it. <laughs> so I'm going to, I'll go through it real quick and I'll, I'll tell you how I bait, but really um, the, the main thing you want to have is a five gallon bucket that you can use to fill up corn. So you get a five gallon bucket, uh, you know, go wherever you can buy just regular deer corn in a sack a 40 or 50 pound sack. And you want to fill up that five gallon back bucket about three quarters of the way full with that deer corn. Uh, then you just wanted to go to the store uh, and get you some of uh, that really cheap uh, sugary soda, the fruit punch soda or strawberry soda, um, you know, just something that you can make that's real uh, uh, fruity, anything like that is going to do better. But uh, you're just going to pour one two liter bottle of, of that into that mix. Uh, and then also you're going to get some uh, a couple boxes of just the regular cheap strawberry powder jello. You're going to pour that that powder in there along with a few packets of the instant rise uh, yeast. This is probably the most important ingredient. A lot of people um, I've heard of and do that do recipes don't use yeast. They may pour beer in there or they may pour other things uh, or some people leave yeast out. But to me, the yeast is what makes it ferment. It's actually what kind of makes it stink uh, other than just pouring stuff, sweet stuff in there and making it smell good. This is kind of what makes it stink. And this is the scent that gets thrown up and attracts them more than anything. But you put all those ingredients into the, the bucket, you fill the rest of it up with water and you let, let it sit for three or four days. If it's warmer outside, it'll take less time to ferment and start getting nasty and stinky. Uh, if it's colder, it'll take a little bit longer, but you want to make sure when you put that lid on, don't put it on too tight because it does build up some, some air <laughs> pressure. In there. And, and we that, don't want any explosions. It will explode. Uh, so poke you some holes in top and leave that, that, uh, top loosened on there. Um, but that is the, the not so secret, <laughs> uh, hog bait and recipe. But I tell you that that hog bait and recipe has done better for me than anything else. But really I want to break it up into three categories. 
and we can get into the other things, but really there's your own homemade hog baits. Um, there are, uh, there are hog bait, uh, enhancers that you can buy. And then you can buy some other types of scents that, uh, necessarily, not necessarily put on hog baits, but they are put, you know, put them in areas to attract hogs to a certain area. So, uh, you know, we're going to talk about a few of those different things. Well, sure. Um, well, before we jump into that, I want to say that that is a great recipe. I've used something very similar to that. And, you know, I don't know, I was always taught add beer to it. You know, like you yeah, said, I don't know yeah. really even if it does anything, but uh, I can't bring myself to add good beer. to it. So <laughs> it's got to be something that's like, you know, rot gut, you know, rot yeah. gut skunk to laying out in the barn or something right. before I'm going to put well, it in there. But, but I it, have done that. And you even hear about people uh, soaking deer corn in diesel. And they say they do yeah. so, you know, to keep other animals away from it. But, you know, I know you have some experience with that. I, I do. That's something that, you know, I, I don't want to get flamed for this because, again, everybody's got an opinion. And uh, I've seen some some discussions on some of the forums about this. And I think there's just a lot of different experiences with it. And generally speaking, the, the experience that most people seem to have in the belief is that if you take that corn – you soak it in diesel, the deer won't mess with it. They won't eat it. They'll bypass it. Then the hogs come to it. And the hogs not only just will eat it in spite of the diesel, they actually are attracted to it. And mm -hmm. I think that is true. I think that they like the oil that's in the diesel. I think there's something about that smell they like as well. They'll roll in it and, and get that, that oil and diesel on them and then eat the corn. Uh, right. But the, the issue that I have had, um, my brother and I both over the years in, in using diesel corn is the deer eating it. Right. And I'm not talking about just like came by an Ada kernel, like 25 pounds and they camp out a bunch of does stand there and eat it until it is absolutely mm -hmm. gone. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't know, we manage our deer and it just concerns me a little bit. I don't know that there's any ill effects on them, but it's one of those things I don't want to take a chance on. And I don't really care what it does to the hogs. I'm out to, to kill them. They're a pest and a nuisance anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't know what it does to the deer. So I've just decided not to do it. It's just something that I no longer do. And, and again, I'm not saying that's the experience that everybody's had. I've read plenty from guys who's like, man, deer won't touch it. And that may very well be, it may just be our area for, for whatever reason. But So I, I don't do it, but I think that it does work. I think right. the hogs like that. And, uh, but, you know, going back to the baiting, I, I have done similar things as that one thing, probably the only spin that I put on that sometimes, again, it's just the way that I was taught is I use chicken scratch or hen scratch mm -hmm. and I'll add that in there. Uh, we have always done that. Like if we were catfishing, you know, we would yeah. sour, sour grain, same thing, hen scratch and it sours quick. Uh, because it's small and you've got the millet and a bunch of different, uh, you know, small grains in there. And so we, a lot of times we'll kind of add that uh, to, because it seems to sour quicker than the corn does. So only other thing that I would add, uh, you know, for when I do it, but, but absolutely it's a great recipe. Well, well, look, so let's move it on. You know, you mentioned some of these other attractants and some of these other, uh, you know, bait toppers and whatever. I know you've used a bunch of these. Uh, so definitely jump in and tell us what you think about them, what you've used and, you know, if you think they're any good, if they're worth the money, what have you. Right. So, you know, when I get, uh, people like yourself, buddies that want to come out and hunt for the night, you know, sometimes I don't have time to sour corn and, you know, cause it's a, sometimes a several day process. Um, so in, in order to be able to do something quick where I can throw out corn and get some scent on it, uh, there are some, some bait enhancers and this is one of them. This is, a uh, Evolved Habitats, uh, and this is not a sponsor of the show. We're going to no. give them a free plug, though. This is uh, called Hog Wild Pig Punch, and this is something that you can just throw a bunch of corn on the ground, uh, squirt some of this uh, on it. It's kind of got a, a sweet smell to it, but it's it doesn't smell great, so it's kind of the best of both worlds or worst of both worlds, however you want to look at it. But uh, something like this can – uh, enhance the bait to give it some more scent out there to get it. Really, you're just wanting that scent to go up in there and, and go in the direction where the hogs are to bring them out. But something like this is, has worked really well. Uh, and, and what I've done with that, uh, and, and really going back to the baiting, the technique that I use, and this is probably a good time to talk about it because it goes uh, along with, with just throwing out the enhancers. Um, I bury my corn 
uh, I get a pulse hole digger and I'll bury it about two feet deep uh, with that pulse hole digger. I'll pour the soured corn down in the bottom of that hole and then I'll just sprinkle a little bit of the, the corn on top of the hole. Same thing with the bait en uh, enhancer. If you don't have time to sour the corn, you just, you know, pulse hole digger, throw some corn at the bottom of that hole and then squirt some of that uh, enhancer on there to, to give it some uh, aroma. And what that does is it, it makes it where those hogs, all they're focused on is digging that, that corn up. And, you know, that they're, they're naturally uh, wired to be diggers. You know, that's, you know, they're digging for grub worms or digging for food. So to them, that is no different than what they're already doing. So if you can walk up on a hog and their face is buried in a hole, like what happened with me three nights ago, uh, I had a hog that he was so focused on that, getting that, food out of that bottom of that hole he didn't see me sneaking up uh to him and I, I snuck up to within 20 yards to take a shot and that's a lot closer than i like to be but i was trying to shoot over some tall grass so i had to get in that position he never saw me coming and never smelt me because his like i said his nose was buried at the bottom of that hole he was digging it up as uh as frenzied as he could to get the the, the bait out of the hole so now, uh, when 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 interrupt real quick, when you say you know use post hole diggers to to dig mm -hmm. that two foot, you're talking about backing the tractor up, right? You're not talking about hand post hole diggers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I don't work. think I can dig a two foot hole out here in this clay. Yeah, we've got we've got a little bit of clay down here too. It is not fun, and in the summer it ain't fun either. And mm. sometimes I feel like I go out there and I'll dig six or seven of them, and that I'm going kill over and die beside yeah, one yeah, of them yeah. <laughs> but uh yeah you know that it, but that's the best technique a lot of people don't bury corn they just throw it out and the the problem is the hogs will eat it up in a few minutes and then that's they'll right. be and they'll be gone but if you bury it they'll be at that hole sometimes an hour long depending on how hard it is to get down to it so it gives you more time you can go in undetected most of the time you can get closer uh, take uh, you can steady your you know get a setup for a better steady shot if you have more time to 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 prep so you know that's really the technique that i uh i live by if i if anybody says to me what's the most important part of baiting it's making sure that you put the a bait down the bait down in the hole and that's yeah. uh and really you'll have a lot more success and a lot more fun hollow hunting. i can promise you that uh, well, i'll tell you there's something that i want to try and i know that you and i've talked about it before i've never done it i don't think you've done it and that is the pig pipes Pick I know that, head. you know, we've got, uh, we've got friends and I've got customers that have done it. And, you know, if you don't know what that is, there's some good videos on YouTube and I'm sure that in the near future, Hans and I'll probably try to do one and, and put it out and we'll do some testing. But basically you take a PVC pipe of some sort, mm -hmm. uh, you know, maybe four inch, six inch, eight inch. I've seen guys use 55 gallon drums, but uh, most of the ones I've seen are, are four to six inch PVC. You put caps on it, you drill mm -hmm. holes in it. And you put a chain on it, drive a stake in the ground. And so you put the corn in there. And what happens is those hogs come up and their natural, you know, rooting, uh, you know, the way they work, they like to root around and push things around. So they'll push that pipe. It dribbles the corn out so they can't eat it mm -hmm. fast. And with it staked down with a chain, they can go in a complete 360 degree circle with it, maybe in a big area, but they can't leave with it they can't push it way right. off and so you've got right. it in one location it's good if you got a camera on it it's good you know you know where to go look for the hogs if you've got it set up and that's something i really want to try too i think it would be uh, be something kind of fun to, to test out yeah exactly and uh the along the same lines as the pig pipe you have the what they call the pig barrel you know mm -hmm. so if you're not going to be if you don't go to a property very often to to check bait if it's far away you can fit a lot more corn in a barrel than just the pipe. Mm -hmm. So if you're, if you're baiting and you only go to a spot once or twice a month to check it, um, you know, that uh, the, the pig pipe or the pig barrel, you mm -hmm. know, either one of them, I think are really good. So, um, you know, I, I have not tried those, but that's something uh, when I get time, yeah. I definitely would love to do, you know, right now what I'm testing uh, is something called the boar collect. And I don't know if you've ever heard of it, Jason. I've heard of it. You know, I know that the North Texas crop protection guys have, if uh, you know, they've been, they've become a reseller for these things in the United States. And I don't know much about them. I've seen a couple of pictures, but you've got one. Is that right? Uh, they were nice enough and they're going to be a guest of ours coming up uh, on a future episode to, to come and talk about it a little bit more. I actually just set it up and basically the boar collect is a, a system that was started 
uh, baiting system started over in Norway and the people overseas, uh, they swear by it. They, you know, they don't, from what I hear, they don't throw out baits and different things. They, it, the, the boar collect is a, basically a box with a, a pump in it. And it's got a, um, like a, a rubber hose that comes out the side of it and you cut slits in those hoses and it pumps oil what I call oil, but, uh, it could either be, you know, something like pine tar, which is what I'm using in it. Uh, you can also use, uh, uh, something that I've tried in the past pig oil, uh, which basically comes in a, uh, a, a little black container. It looks like a, you know, a bottle of motor oil, but mm-hmm. it's just, this stuff is some stinky, nasty stuff. <laughs> you do not want to get on it, but it's called pig oil. You can put that in that bore collect system too, but basically it just, so you it, put it on a tree or a post on what yep. do you do with it? you put it on a tree and it mounts to a tree and it's got that hose that wraps around the tree a little bit. When that motor kicks on, it's got a timer. So, uh, it, it pumps that, uh, that the fluid out in that hose and there's slits in the hose at the bottom and all of that either pig oil or pine tar or whatever leaks out onto the tree. And what the hogs do is they come and rub on it. And, you know, similar to like a, a deer rubbing on a tree, you know, to get the felt off its antlers. You know, hogs like to rub on trees. You see rub marks on trees, you know, muddy hog uh, marks on trees that they've just been rubbing on. But this is uh, something I'm excited about because the people overseas swear by it. And I've got a camera mounted uh, to, you know, at it right now, taking pictures to see uh, if we've got anything on camera. So I'm excited about checking that. But that's something that uh, those guys in North Texas Crop Protection are going to come talk mm-hmm. about uh, here pretty soon. And uh, they're going to be able to uh, shed some more light. And hopefully I'll have some pictures and some results from that uh, from me putting it out here recently. But that's uh, that's another thing talking about, you know, with the pig oil. Uh, I've got uh, also something called the Brickmore uh, pine tar that I picked up at the tractor supply. And these are things that you can just basically pour on the side of a tree. You know, you can just get this pig oil, oil or the pine tar and just... Uh, spread it on the side of a tree it'll last for a good good while and uh, you'll be able to go back and see if hogs have been rubbing on it you'll see uh, mud on the side of the tree or, or you may even see uh, scrape marks from their cutters uh, scraping on the tree but they they love they love the scent of it they it smells nasty and they want to smell nasty so they want it all over them. it's just you know Jason it's kind of like when you see a dog out in the backyard and they're rolling on poop and you're mm-hmm. like why is that dog rolling on poop? <laughs> <laughs> like it's the same do. thing. Yeah, hogs just want to roll in nasty, smelly stuff. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that's what I've been trying and testing out right now. So we'll have some more results on that here in the future. Okay, well, that's that's great. Well, you know, is there – so we've talked about your, your you know, secret recipe. We, we've talked about that. We've talked about the boar collect. We've talked about the pig pipe burying it. But, you know, on these – uh, other attractants and toppers like the hog wild, like the, the pig oil, like any of these. There's several more things out there. There's some that I know we haven't tried. We, we've talked about, the, I think there's like pig candy or hog candy or something. There's mm-hmm. several. The ones that you've used, do you feel like they're worth the money? Because some of them, like I think that pig oil, it's expensive. Um, do you yeah, think these yeah. are worth the money or do you think it's just good if you're in a, a pinch? Is, there, you know, is it just cheaper to go ahead and just sour your own corn? So that's a good point and a good question, Jason, because um, I I just started using the pig oil and you're right for uh, this is a 32 ounce bottle of pig oil. It's about twenty five dollars. It's not cheap. Um, and I will tell you, a little bit of this goes a long way. So it's like fine but, perfume. Then it's 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 expensive <laughs> like perfume for your wife and it goes a long way. Right. Well, I guess I'm pretty lucky. My wife doesn't wear that fancy perfume. <laughs> Not no big old behind the ear. No, no. But uh, it, the, now I would tell you honestly, the jury is still out on the pig oil. Okay. Uh, I do have some pictures of some hogs rubbing on uh, some logs that I put it on. Um, but it's too early to say that this is the best stuff ever. So I'm not going to go that far, okay. but the jury's still out. Um, now the hog wild um, bait enhancer, I've used this a lot in the last two years. Uh, I use it alongside of sour corn. I'll use sour corn and this stuff. And man, I've had great results with this. This is about, there's actually 40 ounces in this bottle of hog wild pig punch. And it's about seven bucks. And again, this is something that'll last a long time. Uh, it doesn't take much to throw up a good a good scent, and uh, I do believe in that. Um, like again, they're not paying us anything to say that. Sure. I wish they were. Yeah, that's right. But uh, 
but uh, they they uh, um, it works well. Now there is uh, some of the things that you talked about. There, uh, forgive me, I don't know the name, but they're more of a, a thicker consistency, kind of like a molasses type that you can buy in the stores. Um, and the name escapes me, but really any of those type of bait enhancers, I think are going to work well. You know, this, you got the molasses based, uh, enhancers, you've got the, the fruity stuff that smells good, but anything like that, I think is going to be, be good. Um, but when you're talking about just using that without anything else, without any corn, um, you may get a hog to come in just on that, but if, if nothing's holding them there, you're not, they're not going to hang out very long. Yeah. And at the so, end of the day, uh, you know, a 50 pound sack of corn, I don't know what you got to pay for it right now, but I mean, between depends on where you buy it, five, six, seven bucks. And you can go a long ways with some soured corn, 50 pounds. I mean, it's, yeah, it's a, you're right. And, and if I can add one more thing, cause I've, I've made this mistake and, and on these shows, Jason and I are, we're going to, we want you to learn through our mistakes and I've, I've made a bunch <laughs> of them. And, uh, you know, what I used to do, I'd used to crack open a, a bag, a 50 pound bag of corn and just dump it out in one big pile. Right. And, um, you know, I started thinking about it and I started watching hogs over that, the, that bait pile and that one big pile and they were fighting over it. And, uh, what I found is when I get that, when I open that bag and I spread it out in a big, huge circle, first of all, uh, it takes them longer to eat all of it because they're having to search it out more, you know, if it's spread out, uh, and they're not, uh, the hogs aren't running each other off. So if, if you get one dominant hog over a bait pile and it's right there in front of them, they're going to run the other hogs off mm. and they're going to get other hogs are going to get disinterested and they're going to, they're going to leave. Um, but if you spread out that, that corn in a big, huge area, um, those hogs can eat without being aggressive towards each other too much. So all the hogs will stay in that one spot for, uh, for quite a long time. So if there's one thing that I've learned in that regard is spread out the corn, don't just dump it in one big pile, you know, it's quick and easy just to open it and just dump it, but you know, get in there and just throw it up in the air and spread it out as far as possible. And that will, that'll help you get bigger sounders in as well. I agree with that. You know, I've did the same thing. I've got a, uh, I've got a couple of piles that I keep that are within eyesight of my house and my pasture. They're two to 300 mm -hmm. yards away. And those are different because I can ride down there on my ranger every day if I need to, or every other day and put out corn. Uh, again, I normally use soured corn there, but in some of these places where it takes longer to get to, maybe I had to go way down in the woods. I'm, I agree with you totally. And if I can just pour that area, you know, pour it out in a big area, kick it in the grass and the leaves, make them root for it. It just takes mm -hmm. them longer to get it. Right. And, and there is a misconception that a hog is always going to come and eat every single piece of corn that's out there on the ground. I mean, if you've got enough of it out there, they'll get bored, they'll get full, yeah. they'll, they'll move on and come back tomorrow, yeah. you know, so that's exactly they don't right. always eat every single bit of it. But, well, no. well, look, you know, I think this has been a, an interesting topic. I'll be honest, I've learned some stuff from you. You've used some of these attractants that I haven't used. I've used some of this stuff many, many years ago, but there's a lot more on the market now than there was 10 years ago. And I think we're going to continue to see, you know, more and more products. And I am excited to hear more about this boar collect when we talk to the mm -hmm. guys from, you know, North Texas Crop Protection and see what this thing's like. And I'm, I'm very interested to actually get my hands on it and look at it this mm -hmm. weekend when I come up to your place. Right. And uh, yeah, with these, uh, again, with North, uh, North Texas Crop Protection are going to be on the show here uh, in the next couple of episodes or so. And we're, they're going to have uh, – a lot to say about this new boar collect uh, baiting system, if you call it that. Yeah, <laughs> it's exactly. a it's a, a rubbing post or rubbing tree. Mm -hmm. uh, also, Jason, I want to uh, remind uh, all the listeners that if you have any ideas or topics for the show, you can email us at the late night vision show at gmail dot com. We'd love to. If you have any suggestions for the show, if you have any questions about anything that we've talked about, any of the baiting stuff, any of the scopes that we've talked about in the past past please reach out to us. Uh, and also one more thing is um, you can now uh, go to YouTube and you'll be able to watch our videos on YouTube. We're going to start loading the podcast with some video here shortly. So uh, this is hopefully going to be the first show that we have that up, up there in the next couple of days. So you can go on and see some of these products that we've talked about uh, on the, the late night vision show YouTube page. 
Um, and, uh, you know, to be able to find me, all you have to do is go to uh, Hans ETX on YouTube, uh, on Instagram. It's Hans ETX. Uh, and Jason, where can they find you at? Well, you can find me at OutdoorLegacyGear.com. That is the online store. And you can always find me on Facebook, Instagram. It's all under Outdoor Legacy Gear. Uh, if you have questions about thermal scopes, uh, you know, digital night vision, any kind of optics, night vision stuff, just give me a call. The number is 877-350-1818. Always glad to talk to you and answer any of your questions uh, before you make a purchase. But again, you can find me on all the social medias. You can also find the Late Night Vision Show on Instagram. You can also find uh, the Late Night Vision Show on Facebook. So just search for us there. And we really appreciate y'all taking the time to listen to this. Uh, again, please keep giving us your feedback. Keep subscribing. And we look forward to uh, talking to you on the next episode. Thanks, y'all. Have a good evening.